Hello guys, welcome back to our course Python for Data Analysis. In this video, we'll be talking about break, continue, and pass statement in Python. And we will explore how break, continue, and pass statement allows us to control the flow of loops in Python. So let's get started. But don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. 9 to 5 data. In Python, break, continue, and pass statement are used to alter the flow of control in loops. They allow us to exit a loop prematurely or to skip certain iterations or simply do nothing in the loop. These statements are particularly useful for handling special cases or conditions within the loop and improving the efficiency of our code. So we'll explore some examples to illustrate how break continue and pass statement work in Python. Let's get into our JoePython notebook and start coding. So let's start with the break statement. And this statement allows us to exit a loop prematurely if a certain condition is met. So we'll take a code to explain what this statement does. So let's start by coding. Let's say we have a list of numbers, numbers and so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. You have this list of numbers. So you want to iterate over the list of numbers and do that with a certain condition. So let's say we use a for loop for number in numbers. So we put a condition if number equals equals six, then what should happen? We should print found six exiting loop like so. This is what we want to do. And after that, again, after we exit the loop, we want to now use a break statement. So the break statement will exit the loop once we found the number six and we'll print what the current number is. And let's do that now. Let's add the break statement. So do break. So what it does is that it exits the loop when number six, when number is six. So we'll print the current number after each loop, after going through each loop, what's the number? So current number. And at the end of our loop, we want to print loop finished. So what this will do for us is that if we look at the list of numbers we have, we have one to 10 numbers. And what we are trying to do is that if number equals to six, the loop should break. So. What this will do is that it will go through the number and the moment it gets to six, the loop will stop going through each of the elements. So instead of going through all the elements and saying, okay, the, num the current number is one, the current number is two, the current number is three. And the moment it gets to six, it stops and without trying to check the remaining numbers after six. So this sometimes saves us a lot of time or computing power because it will stop our code from trying to go through all the list of numbers. So let's try and print this. So you can see now that it goes through the number from one, two, three, four, five. And the moment it found six, the loop stops and it says exiting loop. The moment we found six. So the moment number equals to six, what did we do? We print found six and we'll stop looping through. So this is how to use the break statement. 
Let's move on to the continue statement and this continue statement allows us to skip through the rest of the current iteration and proceed to the next iteration of the loop. So let's take an example. So let's say we want to iterate over a number from 1 to 10. So another way we can do this is that instead of using our list number, we can use the range function. So we'll just say for number in range one and because we want to do 10 so we put 11 as the last number so in this now we are going to check if number modulus 3 will be equals to 0 number modulus 3 equal equals 0 so if this is true what do we want we want to print skipping the number and once this is true we want a continue statement and this continue statement what it does is that it will skip the rest of the loop for this iteration you know, skip the rest of the loop if the number is divisible by 3 So initially, what we have done to the present now is that we have a list of number or we have a range of number and we'll check the number if it is divisible by three. So that is what we have done with if number modulus three equals to zero. So that is if it is divisible by three. So if it is divisible by three, a number that is divisible by three will say skipping number. So we are skipping the number that are divisible by three. So instead of just printing, okay, current number divisible by 3 we we'll just print divisible by 3 so the numbers that are not divisible by 3 what we are going to do with them is say print current number and the number so after we are done with this we can say print loop finished once we have gone through all the iteration so let's run this now what is happening now is that we are only getting skip three skips nine skip three skip six skip nine and this is the this is because we are printing inside the loop. So if we bring this out now, let's say we bring this current number, it's not printing the current number because the current number, it's not true. So for the fact that the current number is not true, it skip all those numbers that are not true. So if we bring it out a bit and say this and try to run it again, you can see now that we have current number one, current number two, and once it gets to a number that is divisible by three, it will skip that number and tell us the name of the, the value of the number, which is skipping three. So three is divisible by three. That is why we are skipping it. So it continues to loop again, current number four, current number five. And once it gets to skip to number six, you get skipping number six because six is divisible by three. So we continue again, current number seven, current number eight. And once we get to number nine, we get skipping number nine because number nine is divisible by three and current number 10. So since we have gone through all the numbers in the range and at the end of our loop, we get print loop finished. So the code, what the code has done is go through this number. And once this certain condition is met, that is if a number is divisible by three, we print skipping number and that value of the number. So if you go through it now, so once we get to number one, it does not meet this condition. It doesn't meet this condition so that is why we have we we can print current number one and again it goes through number two current number two goes through number three number three met this condition which is number modulus three is equals to three is equals to zero so number is divisible by zero so it will now print skipping number three so the same thing 
repeats until we get to six, which is divisible by three, we get skipping number six. Same thing continues until we get to nine, which is divisible by three, skipping number nine. So with a continuous statement, we can skip certain iteration based on a condition such as skipping the numbers that we have just seen now by using the divisibility rules and you can tell it what particular code to do if those conditions are met so that is how to use the continuous statement so the other statement and the final one we want to explore here is the past statement the past statement is a null operation that does nothing it is used when the statement is synthetically required but you want it to do nothing so for example it's sometimes used as a placeholder when writing code that you haven't implemented yet and you are sure you are coming back to the to that particular code to fill in the details later. So let's take some example to illustrate the past statement. So let's say x equals to 10. And doing this, we'll write a condition and say if x is less than 5, what should happen? We want to pass, and if it is not true, which is the else condition, else statement, we'll say print s is greater than or equals equal to five. So if we run this now we get s is greater than or equals to 5. So that is because s is actually not less than 5. So if we use a value and say s is less than 5, you see, let's say s is equals to something like 3, and we run the code again, and copy, and run this condition again, we we'll see that nothing is done. The reason why nothing is done is because it, the condition is true, and we say, okay, pass. So that condition is like a placeholder. So we can come back later and adjust this. Some, sometimes we can put whatever block of code we want to run in that line. So that is why we have put pass there. Pass is just like a placeholder. So now that we have covered the basic of break, continue, and the pass statement in Python. So now our next video, we'll explore another iteration method called list comprehension and we'll get to know how it is used to create list more efficiently don't forget to like this video put your question in the comment section and subscribe to this channel happy coding